24 hours after they'd gotten rid of their dictator of 30 years, Sudanese from all walks of life were still out in the streets protesting. The activists, still euphoric from the overthrow of President al-Bashir, embraced the troops on the street. Grateful that the military chose to abandon the dictator rather than carry out his orders to crush the demonstrations. At Muslim Friday prayers in the capital today, the message was clear. The dictator may have been gone, but the system which propped him up must also go. And that remains the problem in Sudan. All people here, they are facing the same problem we are facing. Like the person, he gave this relationship to another uh, military. This is the man who is the face of the military council overseeing Sudan's transitional process. Today, surrounded by other men in uniform, he said the next government would be completely civilian and that the people on the streets would determine the next steps. If Sudan's military thought that simply changing the president would be enough to get people off the streets, they were mistaken. For many, this revolution of the people, as it's called, is only half complete. We're going to stay here, okay? We're not going to move from here, okay? We're never going to move from here until they give us what we want. Tonight, it was clear that such demands of activists to get what they want are beginning to have an effect, with the announcements by the Sudanese defense minister that he was resigning. I, the head of the military council, he said, announce that I am giving up the post. The news spread like wildfire. Awad ibn Auf has just stepped down. Everyone is ecstatic. Everyone is back to celebrating. But this couldn't get any better. Tonight, despite a curfew, the streets of Sudan's capital are full of ecstatic celebrations. It feels like a key moment. But Sudan's journey out of brutal dictatorship will last much longer. Ragioma News at 10.